Okay, so this is Transformations 1 worksheet. Before you get started on this, I want to review some material. Here is my Algebra Concepts 1 formula sheet. And there's two things off here you have to know. Two things. Thing number one is right down here where it says parent functions. And there are six parent functions that you need to know to do well in the test. Um, so they are lines. I want you to know how lines look and I want you to know what the basic formula is. Parabolas, absolute value equations, cubic functions, square roots, and exponential functions. So I'm not worried about the names very much, but I am worried about you knowing the picture and the formula, okay? You need to know all six of these. And on the back is kind of part two of the story, which is transformations. So there's six different things we can do to any of the six parent functions. And they're all valid, and they're all fair game on your graduation test. So for example, we see here the first one is vertical shifting. So if I take that parabola, this blue curve from the back page, the x squared, and if I add 2 to the end of the equation, I'm going to move my parabola up 2 units. If I subtract 2, I'm going to move it down 2 units. So that's not too crazy. Um, and there's five more of these, so when you have a chance, please review these, and I'll refer to this while I'm working on this worksheet. So here we are, back here. So it says, which equation is represented by the graph below? So first things first, we need to match the parent function. So here's my six parent functions. And which one does this look like? Let's look over here and we see that, oh, okay, it looks like the absolute value. So that's great. So right away we can eliminate, we can eliminate A and B. So I have already a pretty good chance of getting the answer right. So next, we need to figure out what kind of transformation it is. So if I look, I'll see that there's two options. Well, actually, I'm gonna make life even easier. If we look at the graph, I see that how did this become changed from this graph? If we look at our graph here, it goes right through 0, 0, or the origin. And our graph here has been moved down three units. We can count one, two, three. Our graph has been moved down three units. Okay, so this must be a vertical shift. So it must be that three was subtracted from the end of the equation, just like we have here. Notice over here, if it had been subtracted from the inside of the equation like this, it would have been a horizontal shift and our our shape would have been um, to the left or to the right. And I guess in this case it would have been to the right, be over here. Okay, so that one is C. Number two says, how is the graph of f of x equals negative absolute value of x plus four, so another absolute value, obtained from the graph of absolute value of x? It is a reflection across the blank, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so first of all, let's remind ourselves again, we just did this, but again, what the function looks like. So this is a absolute value, which looks like a V, okay. And there's two things we have to be aware of. The first is the minus sign. That's gonna do something special to our function. And the next is the plus four. That will also have a unique effect. So the minus sign, Let's look for a match here. We see that here, if there's a minus sign in front of our equation, like here in our example, the entire function will flip upside down. So for example, if our V looked like this, it's now going to look like this. It's gonna flip upside down. So that's the effect of the minus sign. Let's see which answers match that. So a reflection across the, and this is gonna be a reflection across the x-axis, because here's the x-axis, and our function is reflected across it. So based on that, answer choice C and D must be wrong because we know it's the x-axis. Our next tough issue is are we shifting to the left or to the right? So this is kind of strange, but it's on your formula sheet here. Your function will move in the opposite direction of the sign of the number that it's being shifted by. So in our example here, we have a minus two, but our function ends up going two to the right, which is the positive x direction, so it's backwards. Um, we don't really have time to go into y, but let's just accept that. So our plus four is gonna move our function in the opposite direction. So it'll be a shift to the left. So our answer for this sucker is A. All right, number three says, the graph of, the, of y equals x squared plus one is shown. 
which equation will shift the graph up seven units? Okay, so there's no graph shown, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. That's just an error. So <clears throat> to move up, that's a vertical shift, vertical. Look at our formula sheet. We see to make a vertical shift happen, we need to add or subtract a number from the end of our equation. To make our graph move up, we need to add a number. Subtract would make it go down, but we want to go up. And we'd like it to go up seven units. So what we would have here is our original equation, y equals x squared plus one. And now we're gonna move it up seven, so plus seven. And one plus seven is just eight, so our answer choice has gotta be c. y equals x squared plus eight. Okay, the graph shown are, for, are of the form y equals ax squared. Which graph has the smallest value for a? This is a tough one. If we look on our formula sheet here, we see our rule for compression. Okay, and in this example, I show that um, the bigger the number in front of the x squared, the more squished, the more compressed our graph will be. Okay, you can kind of see it getting squished there. So, if I look at my examples again here, it says which has the smallest value for a. So we can imagine the opposite. Oh, well, here's expansion. This is even better, actually. So that's that's important, but this is even better. Um, so when we put a number in front of the x squared that's even smaller than one, like one third, for example, a really small number, we see that our graph gets fatter. Actually, it gets wider, right? So the smaller this number is, the wider our graph gets. So. This is saying which has the smallest value for A. So smallest value for A must mean widest graph. And who's widest? D is widest. So our answer is D. As part of a project, Ms. Chavez asked her class to graph Y equals negative X squared minus eight. How is the parent graph transformed? Let's deal with what I consider the easier part first. We've already learned that if we add or subtract a number from the end of a formula, it's gonna move up or down. So the negative eight is gonna move the whole graph down eight. So I see a down eight here, I see a down eight here, I see two up, so these are gone. So like I said, killing, eliminating bad answers is always a good idea, so you wanna do that whenever possible. So we've eliminated two bad answers, that's great. And now, we gotta figure out the rest of this. So one option is that it's reflected over the x-axis, one option is that it's reflected over the y-axis. So back to our formula sheet, which you'll need to memorize as best you can before the test. So notice in our reflection section here in the middle that a negative in front of the equation flips it vertically over the x-axis, and the negative inside the equation flips it horizontally across the y-axis. Okay, so that's not too crazy. So again, negative sign in front flips it vertically over the x. Negative sign inside flips it horizontally over the y. So we have a negative sign on the inside in this problem, so it must be shifted over the y-axis horizontally. So our answer has to be B.